We've got to get beyond the finger pointing that does nothing except the de-police at-risk communities. That's the fundamental flaw is this. You absolutely cannot discuss or understand the impact of police strategies and tactics if you refuse to acknowledge the hyper victimization of our disadvantaged communities of color inhabiting the cities of America. It is morally and intellectually dishonest and it's a form of a lie to try to disentangle those two essential conversations. The people that actually live in the neighborhoods punctuated by gunfire and non-fatal shootings every night of the week demand effective and responsive policing. Respectful policing, constitutional policing, thoughtful policing, but they may have demand to be protected. Now the concerns of the neighborhoods are never on the agenda of groups like the ACLU because they're not accountable for taking any physical or moral risks on behalf of people who are afflicted by violence. But the police are. One of the ways we try to figure out where to deploy our resources are where crime and violence are the highest. Why? Because people need to be protected there. In 2015, the homicide rate per 100,000 for Caucasians was 4.6. For African Americans and Latinos, it was 64. Now, what is my moral obligation in the light of those statistics? To carefully deploy my department so it doesn't get sued? To carefully make sure that every neighborhood gets precisely the same dosage of policing, regardless of the body count? The answer is no. Now, we know for many social and historical reasons, the same communities that demand and need our services are often suspicious when they receive those services. We get it. That requires a data-driven strategy grounded in constitutional principles, supported by academic research, proven to be evidence-based, applied fairly and impartially, because it must be distinctly understood. Disparity is not the same as bias. What we found and the research indicates that if regular officers just do traffic enforcement, that has a direct impact on robberies and car thefts. It just does. But we knew if we applied it and wrote citations, we would be in fact imposing a cost on the same neighborhoods we were protecting because the poorest neighborhoods with the most crime would be getting tickets. So we overwhelmingly instructed our officers use lawful law enforcement tactics to identify driving violations. But if there's any way to give them a warning, do so. And 80% of our traffic stops that are traffic violations result in warnings. That is done to ease the impact of a tactic that we have shown year after year directly correlates with reductions in non-fatal shootings, robberies, and car thefts. Here's where people kind of muddy the waters on purpose. They want to get into whether or not we're recovering contraband. And that presupposes that's the goal of the stop. No, the goal of the stop is to enforce traffic laws and have an impact on driving behavior in public spaces and the behavior of people who are watching the police be active in their public spaces. The result is impacts on crime. It's been proven time and time again an active police department that gets out of its cars enforcing traffic laws affects perceptions of safety. It affects the fear level. It affects the fact that people believe those public spaces are being watched. We need to connect the disparate conversations that on the left hand, it's all about police activity, but on the neighborhood level, it's all about fear of crime. We've got to join those conversations. I've been in this business a long time. Nobody gets more than cops. Some of the ambivalence at the neighborhood level about what we do. We know the police have at times in American history been used by political establishments to enforce unjust laws. And we know 
that people that are afflicted by crime have sometimes experienced police response to crime as frightening and alienating. We know all of those things. But the fact of the matter is there are not limitless tools the police have at their disposal. They've got to work with communities, but the conversation that needs to occur, the conversation I'd rather have with the ACLU, is okay, guys, you're right. There is a disparate impact of police engagement in trying to reduce crime. And there is a gross disparate impact on victimization by crime. I think last time we looked, African Americans were 15 times more likely to get shot than white folks, okay? That's crazy. No one should have to live like that. 